channel natural streams so we can consider those values directly or we can calculate also how to calculate we are going to discuss next okay so here you can see they have given some values that minimum of momentum coefficient for natural channel is your 1.05 and maximum is 1.17 and they have taken average average they have given 1.10 and similarly for river under ice cover river valleys over flooded so they have given some values for alpha that is a your energy coefficient for river valleys over flooded they have given minimum values of 1.5 so those things are standard they have performed numbers of experiments and they have uh, they come up with these values okay so sometimes we are going to use those values directly okay so that uh, it depends on what we are going to use it we are going to use minimum or maximum or we can simply use average also okay so those values they have come up with a very large number of experiments they have performed and they after all after those results analyzing those results they have come up with these values for both alpha and for beta okay so now how we are going to calculate that alpha so there is a small derivation small derivation for alpha So see, okay. so this is a cross section of a river. This is the head of the river or you can say boundary of the boundary of the cross section okay. so this is the boundary okay here what we are considered we are going to consider a small elementary area that means we are going to consider a small area We are going to consider a small area. Okay. Okay. So the cross sectional area of that whole river is A, capital A. Okay. The cross sectional area for that particular small area is L A. Or you can write D A. Okay. Okay. The whole cross sectional area, that means if you consider this whole area, if you consider this whole area, consider this whole area, that will be your capital A. Okay. If you consider only that small area, that is your L A or you can write D A. Okay. So so here we are going to consider a del A or you can say small elementary area of the whole cross sectional area A. So out of that whole area, we have considered a small area. We have considered a small area. Okay, small area. And your small w is the specific weight. So now we are going to find out the weight. So weight is nothing but your specific weight 
multiplied by del A. Del A means we are going to calculate this weight of that particular small area or that particular small area. So that's why we have considered del A. If we are going to find out that weight for the whole cross section, then this will be capital A. So now we are considering only for the small particular area or you can say small elementary area. So that's why your specific weight multiplied by del A, that is small area, multiplied the velocity. So for that particular cross-sectional, your average velocity, we are going to consider capital V and velocity inside that particular small area, we are going to consider small v. Okay? So this is the weight, specific weight multiplied by area multiplied by velocity. Okay, so we all know mass equal to sorry. So we all know weight is equal to mass into mass into gravity. So if you want to find that mass, it's only weight by gravity okay so here you can see this is your mass okay so in place of weight we have substituted this equation specific weight multiplied by area multiplied by velocity so as we are considering here for that particular small area, so that is why we are multiplying specific weight with that particular small area that is del A multiplied by your velocity okay? in that particular small elementary area. That's why we have considered small v. Okay? So for mass, this is your equation. Weight by acceleration due to gravity. So now we come up with uh, kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, we all know it is half multiplied by mass into v square, velocity square. So that is why half we have mass. And again, we are considering the small particular area. So that's why your velocity is a small v, velocity square. Okay? So half mv square. So now here in kinetic energy in place of mass we are going to substitute this equation again okay specific weight divided by acceleration due to gravity multiplied by del a multiplied by del a multiplied by del a multiplied by velocity and then this d square okay so half this is mass this is mass and this is velocity velocity square so this is kinetic energy so here this is v square and this is v that's why it will be v cube okay others will be remain same so now we have calculated the kinetic energy for that particular small elementary area. Okay, you can see here in this figure, okay? This is the whole cross-sectional area. This is the surface of water or you can say level of water. So this is your small elementary area that we have considered, okay? So now we have calculated the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy for that particular small elementary area. Now, if we want to find out the kinetic energy of whole cross section, of whole cross section, Then what we are going to do, we are going to take summation of the kinetic energy for 
particular elementary area. That means suppose this is an elementary area, we can consider here number of elementary area. Okay, number of elementary area depending on the depth of flow. Okay, so suppose uh, if this is your cross section. We can consider one elementary area here. This is one. Then we can consider another one. Then we can consider another one. Three. And then four. Five. Okay. And six. This is just an example. Okay. So now if we consider this is your small elementary area one. Two, three of same depth, okay? Of same depth. Then, if we find out the kinetic energy for one, and if you add kinetic energy for two, three, and five till six, we you are going to find out the kinetic energy for the whole cross sectional area. For the whole cross sectional area, okay? If you find out one kinetic energy for one, then two, then three, then four, and five, and six, and if you add all the kinetic energy then you can say that whole kinetic energy is for kinetic energy for the whole cross-sectional area okay that is why for the kinetic energy for whole cross-sectional area we are going to take summation okay so in place of summation you can take integration also it's up to you okay you can integrate or you can take summation the same thing integration is addition okay so here we have calculated the kinetic energy for the particular small elementary area and then we have take summation when you take summation we don't know how many elementary areas we have considered it depends on you if you take you may have considered only two elementary area by considering one is this and one is two okay or you may consider elementary area in similar way one two three and four okay so it depends on you how many elementary area we you considered inside the channel so that is why when you write summation we will write i is to one n so it will start from one till n it may be two it may be three it may be four it may be five it may be six and so on it depends on you how you are going to divide the whole cross-sectional area in how many numbers or in how many sections you are going to divide the whole cross-sectional area okay so it depends on you so when you talking about kinetic energy for the whole cross-sectional area we are going to take summation okay that equation will be same only we will take summation okay so our intention is to find out the alpha okay always remember what we are dealing here our intention to find the alpha or to derive an expression from which we can easily find out the alpha value that is the energy coefficient Okay. So here you can mark this equation one. You can mark this equation one. Okay. So now you take again take your whole cross sectional area. If you take the whole cross sectional area, forget about elementary area now. Okay. You take whole cross sectional area. And for that cross-sectional area, your mean velocity is capital V, okay? And we know when we talk about kinetic energy head, we are going to multiply it by this alpha as because this velocity is not constant or you can say this is a mean velocity, okay? So when you find out the kinetic energy for that particular cross-sectional area, then what we are going to do? Half into mass into velocity squared. So again, in place of mass, we are using that equation.
what we must be using the same equation but what you are going to now we are considering the whole cross sectional area so specific weight multiplied by total area okay because uh, in previous case we have considered only the small elementary area that's why we have taken del a or da okay so now we are considering the whole cross sectional area so when we consider the mass so we are going to multiply it by capital a then we multiply it by your average velocity or mean velocity that is your capital v for the whole cross sectional area then it's divided by acceleration due to gravity so this is mass okay so here okay then we have alpha as this velocity is not uh, constant or its mean velocity we have to multiply it by alpha so that is why this is alpha okay so this equation is your total energy for your particular cross sectional area okay so now what we say if this is your equation 1 and this is your equation 2 we can say that equation 1 and equation 2 is same as because this is also your kinetic energy for whole cross sectional area by considering some elementary area okay and this is also equation 2 is also gives you the kinetic energy for the whole cross sectional area okay so your equation 1 and equation 2 both the equation you will give you the kinetic energy for the whole cross sectional area so now what we are going to do we are going to equate equation 1 and 2 we are going to equating equation 1 and 2. Okay. So here in uh, left hand side, this small w is specific weight area into v cube by 2g and we are multiplied by alpha as this velocity is mean velocity. Okay. In the right hand side, we have considered from, from equation 1. From one okay so here you can see so here you can see we have specific weight here also we have specific weight that will be cancelled out okay then we have twice z here here also we have twice z so this two will be cancelled out okay so what will be remaining alpha is equal to summation of v cube del a divided by v cube whole cross sectional area okay so this is the expression for your alpha This is the expression for your alpha. Okay. So in place of summation, you can consider your integration. Okay. So uh, we will take an example of rectangular channel. So we will consider a rectangular chain. Okay. If this is our level of water. Yeah. So this is your whole cross sectional area A. Okay. And your average velocity or mean velocity in that particular cross section is capital V. Okay. So now we are going to consider a small elementary area.
okay in a particular small elementary area your velocity is small v area is da okay area is da and what else your depth is dy okay and you consider the whole depth is y not whole depth of flow is y not and then for for particular depth of that particular area small elementary area is nothing but your dy okay so now we are going to use this equation to find out the alpha for that particular rectangular channel we are going to use this equation okay so here alpha again v by v whole cube da by a so da is our small elementary area so in rectangular channel area is width into depth so depth as we are considering this da that is area of a small elementary area so we have to consider the depth is dy okay so that's why in place of da we have written b into dy okay and divided by whole cross sectional area here b into y not because the depth of flow for that particular cross section we have considered y not okay and this is your width of the channel b width of the channel so if you consider a small elementary area here the width will be same okay if you consider a rectangular channel the width of that particular small elementary area also be same that particular area also be same so that's why your width will be same and when you find out the area if you consider the small elementary area so your equation will be b into dy okay a depth of flow for that particular elementary area when you consider the whole cross sectional area then it will be b into y not that is the depth of flow for that particular cross section okay so this b b will be cancel out what will be the equation b by this is the average velocity in that particular elementary area then divided by average velocity for that particular cross sectional area 1 by y not dy okay so this integration again we have already discussed it depends on how many number of section you are going to consider it depends on you so that's why your minimum limit is zero okay and maximum is y not that means whatever the elementary area we are going to consider we are going to consider between zero and y not okay so we cannot uh, take number of elementary section beyond this y not because this is our maximum limit as this is our depth of flow okay so that's why your limit you can see is from zero to y not okay if you see the limit here it's zero to y not
Okay. Okay, all students are requested to give your attendance in the chat box. Okay, write your enrollment ID. Okay, all of you write your enrollment ID in the chat box. Okay. So, do you have any questions regarding this alpha? We have considered rectangular section. We can apply this equation also circular also. Okay, it's up to you. Then whatever the area you have considered, the that equation, it will change. Okay. If you consider trapezoidal, trapezoidal, then we are going to consider a small elementary area here. Then we have to take the area of that particular small elementary area by considering as a trapezoidal channel. Okay, by considering as a trapezoidal channel. Okay, so here. And when we consider this A value, then we have to consider the area of the whole trapezoidal section. Okay. But this limit, you know, this limit will be same from 0 to Y0. If your Y0 is the depth of flow. Suppose if your depth, depth of flow is 5 meter, then your limit will be from 0 to 5 meter. So why this limit is uh, related to the depth C, when you have y, dy here, that means you are going to integrate this equation with respect to y. So this limit should be respect to y, okay? Always remember, okay? When you, I think you all know about this thing because this you thing you have already studied in mathematics, okay? When you do integration, and if you do integration with respect to the something, that limit should be relevant to that okay as we are integrating this equation with respect to y so this limit goes to zero to y okay that is your related to your depth of flow okay and uh, if it is a circular then this cross-sectional area we are going to take our circular so it uh, doesn't matter okay rectangle huh? signal, we have taken just an uh, example okay so this is our general equation, okay? This is irrespective uh, of any shape of the channel, okay? But as we can see that the rectangular channel is most common and is easy to understand. So that is why we have considered rectangular channel. And this equation, what we have derived, this is only valid for rectangular channel. Any more doubts? So now we are going to proceed. Yeah, when we see this equation, or you can see that uh, alpha equation for a rectangular channel, if you can see this V, to solve this equation, we need average velocity of that particular cross section. Suppose if we talk about rectangular channel, if you consider a rectangular channel, to solve alpha or to find out alpha, we need the average velocity V for the particular rectangular section. Then only we can solve this alpha. Okay. So how we are going to find out this velocity is our next derivation. Okay. What is our next topic is to find out that average velocity v 
and by finding out this velocity we substitute that velocity here so that we can find out the alpha value okay so that means if you are asked to find out alpha first we need to find out the average velocity okay then only we can find out alpha unless and until that velocity average velocity value is given to you okay if i specify that velocity is 1.5 meter cube per second sorry meter square per second then you can find out the alpha otherwise to find out alpha for a particular section you need to find out first is that average velocity okay so the next topic for r is to how to find out the average velocity for a particular section okay so here you can see again this is your cross section of a river or you can say our irregular section then we have considered a small elementary area the area of that particular small elementary is dA the depth is dy and this small elementary is at the depth of y from the surface this is your surface from the surface to that particular to that particular section that we have considered this length is y okay and the whole depth of the whole depth is or you can say depth of flow maximum depth of flow is y naught okay so we all know when we travel from bottom to the surface our velocity it changes okay and here it reduced okay it's increasing 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 and because of this flow of air okay interaction between your flow of air and your surface of water your velocity at the surface it reduced okay so what we are going to do similarly we are going to consider a small elementary area like the previous one where the velocity v for that particular small elementary area and area for that particular small elementary area is dA. So now we find out the discharge. Discharge we all know discharge is equal to area multiplied by velocity. This is known to us. Okay. So now we are going to find out the discharge for that particular small elementary area. That means we are going to find out the discharge in that particular area, small elementary area. So that discharge we are considered as del Q or dQ. It's up to you dq so velocity we are going to consider small v for that particular area and multiplied by the area of the small elementary area okay so da so similarly previously also if we find out the total discharge total discharge for the particular cross-section area for the whole cross-section area then we have to take summation summation or integration okay so whatever we are going to calculate here suppose here we have considered one elementary area it's up to you how many elementary area you are going to consider one two three four five and so on if you add if you find out the each discharge of each elementary area and if you add all all you have considered then your ultimate result will give you the discharge for a particular cross-sectional area okay so if you add if you take summation or integration it will give you the distance for whole cross-sectional area like the previous one how you have calculated okay so you consider this is as equation one okay then if you want to find out the distance for the whole cross-sectional area you can simply take this is equal to area into velocity okay so area into velocity so again we are going to equate both the equation the so velocity will be 1 by a v d a okay okay v d a so first 
we are going to find out the velocity using this equation then we go back to the alpha and we substitute the value of v here and then we find out the alpha value okay so when we are going to solve problems then those things will be clear how we are going to find out velocity and then how we are going to substitute here and you find out the alpha value okay We are going to end today here, okay? So tomorrow, okay, this meeting is going to end, okay? So I think we have another class today. So we will start our next class at 3 p.m. Okay. okay. So kindly all of you join again at 3 p.m. with the same link. Okay. So join again at 3 p.m. with the same link.